A black-clothed man was wearing a smile on his face and chatting with an expert from an unknown faction when Xiaoyan's gaze landed on him. The man had long black hair that randomly fell behind him. It appeared quite free and unruly. His face was as pale as jade, giving one a gentle feeling. The first impression that such a person gave others was extremely good. However, when such a first impression came from someone from the Hall of Souls, Xiaoyan felt a danger originate from deep within his heart. This black-clothed man did not say anything when the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe was finding trouble with Xiaoyan earlier nor did he add insult to injury. Hence, Xiaoyan had not noticed him. After Sun Air had pointed out his identity, the caution in Xiaoyan's heart soared. He had made a lot of contact with the Hun clan and knew that this clan was extremely mysterious and unfathomable. All of them were extraordinary. This fellow might have a friendly appearance, but it was precisely this friendliness that caused him to appear even more dangerous. There was a good saying, a dog that bites people doesn't bark. This black-clothed man clearly belonged to this category. Moreover, from what Sun Air had said, this fellow was one out of two people most likely to be the next clan head of the Hun clan. This proved that this person was definitely not someone that would be easy to deal with. Even someone as strong as Hunya from the younger generation of the Hun clan did not obtain such an evaluation. While Xiaoyin was observing the black-clothed man, the man seemed to have sensed something. He turned his head and looked at Xiaoyan's face, only to reveal a slight smile. Xiaoyan's eyes involuntarily narrowed when he saw the other party smile, which seemed to represent friendly intent. After which, he turned his head and nodded at Sun Air. He softly said, A very dangerous person. This person is called Han Yu. His name is a little feminine, but he is definitely a man. According to the information that we have received, the competition within an ancient clan like the Han clan is extremely cruel. The fate of those who fail is usually miserable. It is rumored that this Han Yu has never failed since he was born. All of his competitors have fallen under his feet. Additionally, this person possesses the divine bloodline of the Han clan. Sun Air's voice contained a rare seriousness. It seemed that this man called Han Yu was indeed very difficult to deal with. Divine bloodline? Huh. Xiaoyan's eyelids twitched. No wonder Han Yu had never failed. Such a bloodline just proved his potential. As long as he was rational and avoided doing anything foolish, his future was limitless. This Han Yu is different from the other members of the Han clan, who desire to fight and snatch your soul the moment they open their mouth. This person appears friendly but his very bones are dark and ruthless. Gu Qing Yang interrupted. His tone was filled with some fear. Xiaoyan slowly nodded. His heart regarded this Han Yu as a dangerous person. If he had the chance, Xiaoyan would kill this person at the first opportunity. Their stances were different. They were destined to be enemies. Since this was the case, it was necessary to prepare a murderous intent in his heart. The first to act was at an advantage while the last to act would suffer first. Xiaoyan understood this logic. Are we going to launch a full-scale assault and charge into the beast tide this time around? Xiaoyan glanced around him. There were at least a thousand people gathered here. All of them clearly possessed a great strength. This lineup was worthy of being called terrifying. Yes, once the people here are properly arranged, we will once again charge into the beast tide. Otherwise, none of the factions will be able to successfully enter alone. The numbers that form the beast tide are too frightening. Sunur nodded and replied, At that time, our party should gather together. It will be safer if we have more people. Xiaoyan gently nodded when he heard her reply. He was just about to speak when a soft cry suddenly reverberated over the square. He looked to the source of the sound. The voice was coming from that man called Han Yu. Everyone, you should all be aware of our current situation. Our aim is the Bodhisattva ancient tree in the deepest part of the ancient wasteland region. Whether we end up at odds after we reach that place is a little too distant for us to think about now because not a single faction among us will be able to charge through the beast tide alone. Han Yu's clear voice spread over the stone stage. There was something convincing about it. If one did not know about this person's identity and schemes, this Han Yu did possess a good demeanor. Our only chance is to gather everyone together and form an alliance. We will act like an arrow that violently peers through the beast tide. Only by relying on all of our strength will we be able to tear apart the beast wave. Otherwise, there is no hope to reach the Bodhisattva ancient tree. Our alliance will not have any form of seniority or ranking. Hence, no one will give orders to another. Everyone can rest assured that no one will be exploited. 
Only mutual support is present. Of course, anyone who doesn't believe me can remain behind. I will not force anyone to continue, but whoever remains behind will return empty-handed. A silence appeared after everyone heard Han Yu's words. A moment later, many people began to nod their heads. No matter how one put it, there was one sentence that Han Yu had said that was correct. None of the factions here would be able to pass through the beast tide by relying on their own strength. The only way to reach the deepest part was to join hands and charge to it together. Brother Hun Yu is correct. The Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe will accompany you during this attempt. The man with the colorful pupils opened his mouth and faintly spoke while everyone's hearts were swaying. Ha ha, in that case, I will thank Brother Jio Feng. Hun Yu smiled when he heard Jio Feng's words. He cupped his hands to the man with colorful pupils in the distance. You are right. We will not be able to gain anything by remaining here. It is better if all of us make an attempt together. Many people were clearly convinced by the words from the man with colorful pupils. Quite a number of people immediately cried out. This continued to spread and an increasing number of people began to nod their heads in agreement. That fellow doesn't appear to be an ordinary person. Xiaoyan's eyes swept over the man with colorful pupils without leaving a trace. He made a comment. Ha ha, that person is called Geofong. His reputation in the magical beast world is quite great, and it has already been decided that he will be the next tribal head of the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe. His colorful eyes are the result of the Qi method he practices. Most of his Do skills train both of his eyes. They are quite rare and difficult to deal with. Gu Qing Yang glanced at the man with colorful eyes and laughed. Xiaoya nodded. No wonder he appeared to possess a high status within the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe. He had already been picked to be the next chief. He was indeed extraordinary. Since no one has any objections, let us all get moving immediately. It is around noon now, and the time when the ferocious beasts are laziest. Hun Yu smiled when he saw that the majority had agreed to join hands to charge into the beast tide. The mouth on his white jade-like face was lifted into an arc. Let's also prepare to leave, Sinair softly said. Everyone should be careful when we charge into the beast tide. Even though everyone is gathered together, there is less than a 10% chance to succeed. That Han Yu and Jio Feng are also aware of this success rate. They are only planning on using these people's strengths to try and penetrate deeper into the beast tide. At that time, they will be able to rely on their own strength to take advantage of the situation and break through. Most of the remaining people will become food for these ferocious beasts. These people have really underestimated the ancient wasteland region. We cannot charge through even with all these people? Xiaoyan's heart trembled upon hearing her words. There were hundreds of elite Dozuns present. One could easily find a large group of expert Dozongs. Such a powerful lineup was unable to break through the Beast Tide? Just how terrifying was the Beast Tide? Everyone in the square was beginning to move while Xiaoyan was feeling shocked in his heart because of the Beast Tide. Many figures rushed into the sky. After which, they were remained suspended in the air like a close-knit dark cloud. Let's go. Xiaoyan did not delay any longer when he saw the main group beginning to move. He nodded at everyone before slowly rising into the air. The remaining people quickly followed, forming quite a large circle as they gathered together. Everyone, let's move. Hun Yu glanced at Xiaoyan's group from the sky without drawing attention. After which, he looked at the sparse human figures on the square below. He ceased paying attention to them and let out a loud laugh. After which, his figure took the lead as he charged to the northern sky. A large black mass quickly followed, accompanied by loud the rumbling sound of wind being split. Xiaoyan's group was also mixed in this large contingent. They did not approach the front and attempt to stand out. The faster one's energy was exhausted, the earlier one would end up dying. That black mass of people was like a dark cloud as it flew through the sky with lightning-like speed. The 50-kilometer distance was covered within less than 10 minutes. When the large group flew over the final lush green mountain, black, endless plains appeared in front of everyone's eyes. Cheyenne's gaze leaped over the large crowd and looked over the black plains. His mouth immediately inhaled a violent breath of cold air. One could see black clouds above the endless plains as many large ferocious beasts filled the ground. They were packed tight and appeared like a blood-colored sea that extended into the horizon. Ferocious roars filled with violence continuously resonated over the plains like thunder. Is this the ancient wasteland region's beast tide? How frightening. Xiaoyin involuntarily muttered as he exhaled a cold breath. 
No wonder Soner had said that they unlikely to make it through despite so many experts gathering together. Compared to that beast tide, their group was like a grain of sand in the ocean. Cheyenne's eyes leaped over the endless beast tide and scanned the distant dark area. Is the Bodhisattva ancient tree behind the beast tide? Everyone, the beast tide is in front. Now is the best time to attack. Since I suggested we form this alliance, the most dangerous front spot will be temporarily filled by my people. But once we are exhausted, we will pull back and it will be someone else's turn. While Xiao Yin was quietly shocked because of the terrifying beast tide, Han Yu's voice had once again appeared. Many people quietly sighed in relief when they heard that he would take the most dangerous spot. Would these people be so kind? Xiao Yin shook his head and smiled when he heard Han Yu's words. He understood the Hall of Souls very well. Would someone from that faction be this impartial? It was a great joke. Everyone, prepare to attack. A warm smile continued to hang on Han Yu's face. His eyes slowly swept over the large group before pausing on Xiao Yin and Sun Air. Subsequently, he abruptly turned his body and charged forward. Over ten black-robed figures quickly followed behind him. The many experts quickly followed behind Han Yu's group. Their dochi slowly spread from their bodies. Xiao Yin's large group slowly rose into the sky. They were not too close to the front and had chosen to remain near the middle. The pressure near the middle would be less. The black mass in the sky formed an arrow shape with Han Yu's group at the front. If this large contingent were to erupt, the force would undoubtedly be extremely frightening. Let's go. Seeing that the formation had taken shape, Han Yu at the front finally waved his hand. He took the lead to charge forward. A deafening sound made from many sounds of rushing wind charged toward the beast tide a short distance away. Following Han Yu, the arrow formation behind him followed with a rumbling sound. A rushing wind noise echoed across the sky. Roar, roar. This large formation was discovered by many ferocious beasts when it was still 10,000 feet from the beast tide. Roars that were filled with a violence rang out like thunder. These roars spread into the distance and stirred even more roars. Charge. The 10,000-foot distance was covered in the blink of an eye. Frightening Dochi surged out of the bodies of Han Yu's group at the front before shooting forward. All of the ferocious beasts within a thousand feet were shattered into blood pools in an instant. At the same time, this large group ruthlessly charged into the beast tide. Bang, bang. The group unleashed a shocking momentum the moment it collided with the beast tide. Waves of powerful dochi spluttered out. The ferocious beasts within a thousand feet were shattered to death. The roars that the ferocious beasts had emitted before their deaths continued to reverberate across the sky. Xiaoyan's large group was situated near the middle of the contingent. A couple of Dochi pillars were occasionally swung out, killing any ferocious beasts that approached. At the same time, their eyes continued to sweep around them. The ferocious beasts in this outer part of the beast tide were not very strong, which was why they were able to push in so easily. Once they entered deeper into the beast tide, this fearless advancement would likely be stopped. Reality was just as Xiaoyan's group had expected. After this group had forcefully torn a large hole through the beast tide and advanced 10,000 feet, the surrounding pressure suddenly began to soar. Some of the powerful ferocious beasts were able to charge closer to the group. The stench they gave off caused the expressions of many people to appear a little grave. Bang! Sonair randomly tossed a dochi pillar out and killed two ferocious beasts charging toward them. There was an additional solemnness on her face as she said, it is already possible to see some Doe Zone class ferocious beasts here. If we continue to advance, we will end up meeting some Doe Zone equivalent beasts. That will be when the true battle will begin. Everyone should be careful. Do not get entangled with them. One will definitely die if one falls to this beast tide. Shaya nodded. They were gradually advancing deeper into the beast tide. There were a countless number of ferocious beasts in front of them, to their left, to their right, and even up in the sky. They could no longer retreat. All they could do was charge forward until they truly broke through the beast tide. Using a momentary lull in fighting, Xiao Yan's eyes swept over the front of the arrow formation. At this moment, Han Yu's group seemed to be doing their best to attack the ferocious beasts in front. Row after row of ferocious beasts shook and fell to their hands. The group continued to venture deeper under their guidance. At this moment, many people had begun to gradually believe that Han Yu was indeed performing his due diligence for this group. However, Xiao Yin was naturally not included with the people who thought this. The group swiftly advanced as the ground trembled. 
Fresh blood and ferocious beasts' corpses landed everywhere they passed, but the scarlet fresh blood did not frighten the beast tide. Instead, it caused the beasts to become crazier as they charged at the contingent without any fear of death. This swift advancement continued for about 20,000 feet before it clearly slowed. Some of the ferocious beasts were able to charge to the front of the group, after which they exchanged blows with some experts. Although these ferocious beasts would quickly turn into a pool of blood by the combined effort of many experts, the situation had clearly become a little more difficult. If one were to look down on these planes from the sky, one would be able to see an increasing number of ferocious beasts heading toward the group of humans after hearing the commotion. They were densely packed and appeared like an army of ants, causing one's skin to turn numb. Bang! The situation became more difficult, and in the end, even with the combined attacks of many experts, the group was no longer able to quickly kill some of the ferocious beasts. A terrible physical battle had finally begun. While Hun Yu's group was fighting an intense battle with the beast tide at the front, everyone could clearly sense their speed greatly slow. With this reduction in speed, the ferocious beasts from the left, right, and center quickly gave chase. After which, a miserable battle suddenly erupted. Roar. Boom. Many different ferocious beasts with red eyes wildly charged into the group. Although most of the ferocious beasts were killed by the combined effort of some experts, some exceptionally strong ferocious beasts still managed to approach the group. Hence, the group began to experience some injuries and deaths. Sharp miserable screeches continued to spread from all around. Move quickly. The faces of most people turned pale when faced with such an enormous pressure. They hurriedly urged the entire group to push forward. At this moment, Xiao Yan's eyes once again swept to the front, but he discovered that Han Yu and those experts from the Hall of Souls had completely vanished. The group at the front consisted of experts who were being pushed by those from the back. They were unable to retreat and could only charge forward. As these experts at the front faced various ferocious beasts, they did their best to unleash their attacks. However, they became more exhausted by each beast they killed. When they wanted to withdraw, they suddenly discovered that many people's eyes had turned red after being surrounded by the beast tide. These people were pushing forward with all their might and the experts at the front found that they could not pull back. They did not have the opportunity to withdraw, and their dochi was exhausted. Before they could feel hopeless in their hearts, they would be ruthlessly bitten by the enormous bloody mouths of the ferocious beasts that were wildly pouncing over. After these people were bitten to death by the ferocious beasts, another group was pushed forward. They forcefully endured before this cycle repeated itself. There was no longer a need for anyone to urge this group at the moment. Everyone was charging forward in order to survive. Hence, there was an endless number of people being pushed to the front, becoming a sacrifice for the advancement of the group. Hence, as the group advanced further, the number of people also began to diminish. Many people lost their sense of reasoning because of these losses. The group started to lose control. Only a small group of people were able to retain their rational mind and try their best to maintain their speed to avoid allowing themselves to be pushed by the human flow to the front. Xiao Yan's group was one such example. The expressions on the faces of Xiao Yan's group were filled with a seriousness as they looked at the rapidly shrinking contingent. Even some six or seven star dozoons were exhausted by these continuous battles. Finally, they were tossed into the ferocious beast crowd, torn into pieces in the blink of an eye, and swallowed into the stomachs of the ferocious beasts. These people. Xiao Yan's eyes swept over the force that had shrunk ten times. He discovered Han Yu's group at the back of the group with a gentle smile still Han Yu's face. However, this smile appeared exceptionally sinister among the surrounding viscous blood and corpses. Xiao Yan GG, this force is about to be broken. We will follow if Han Yu's group takes the lead and moves when the time comes. We will have to rely on ourselves to transverse the remaining route. Sun Air's voice was suddenly transmitted into Xiao Yan's ears while his eyes were sweeping around. Xiao Yan nodded and slowly exhaled. His eyes glanced behind at the ferocious beasts and humans' corpses. These people had used all of their strength only to end up benefiting others for free. They had been used by Han Yu without gaining anything. Bang! A completely black metal-like beast suddenly appeared at the front of the contingent. Its enormous fist ruthlessly smashed a couple of figures at the front. The frightening force smashed those people, whose dochi had been exhausted, into mincemeat. Swoosh. 
While the people in front were being blocked by that extremely strong beast, Hun Yu's group pressed their toes on the ground. Their bodies leaped over everyone with lightning-like speed. Finally, they flashed by the enormous beast and charged forward. Follow them. Xiao Yin let out a cold snort when he saw Hun Yu finally abandon everyone. He waved his hand and his body took the lead to rush forward. Sun Air and the rest quickly followed. Another few groups of people flew out the same time Xiao Yan's group moved. These people had already understood Hun Yu's schemes and were also intending on using the strength of the others to charge through the beast tide. After these people rushed forward, the remaining hundreds of people were pounced upon by the ferocious beasts around them. Miserable screams spread across of the sky. Swoosh! Xiao Yan's group rushed through the air. Hun Yu's group was a couple thousand feet in front of them. They had not exhausted much Dou Qi with their powerful strength. While the others became crazy after being pushed into the ferocious beasts, they had rested. Thus, they were prepared to break through. Xiao Yan's eyes swept over Han Yu's group in front. After which, he glanced behind him. The group from the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe was a short distance behind. The man with the colorful pupils, called Geofeng, was leading them. The many Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe experts were guarding something behind him. Xiaoyan caught sight of Feng Qing Air in this group. At this moment, she had woken up. Although a red handprint remained on her face, she, at the very least, had retained her life. Feng Qing Air lifted her head while Xiao Yin was observing the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe's group. Her eyes clashed with Xiao Yan's eyes as she grit her silver teeth. However, she held back this time around and did not dare to express the hatred in her heart. Xiao Yan's slap earlier had woken her up. Xiao Yan was unconcerned about Feng Qing Air. Although her strength had soared, her future achievement was limited and would not pose much of a threat. Xiao Yan's eyes swept over the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe, after which he looked further behind where a couple of groups were following them. These people possessed quite a great strength. From the looks of it, they understood the beast tide here relatively well. Hence, they had retained most of their strength and did not exhaust a large amount of Chi when they charged in earlier. We are still in the beast tide. I wonder if there will be even stronger ferocious beasts near the back. Xiao Yan lifted his head. The scarlet red beast seemed to have become sparser near the distant horizon. That place was likely the end of the beast tide. However, no one knew if there would be some extremely difficult to deal with ferocious beasts there. Although many ferocious beasts had appeared during this journey, the strongest one that Xiao Yan had met was only equivalent to a five star dozone. He had not met any stronger ones. Roar. Many furious roars filled with violence once again rang out while Xiao Yan was in deep thought. He then vaguely sensed an additional pressure form around them. Have those people behind been finished off? Xiao Yan was quiet. There have been dozens of elite Dozuns in that group. However, these numbers were not worth mentioning to this beast tide. Even though their resistance was extremely intense, it futile, death was only a matter of time. The thing that caused Xiao Yan's heart to sink a little was that even with so many people, they were only able to endure for a short period of time. Everyone, be careful. Maintain the formation from earlier. Brother Qing Yang, the both of us will open a path up front. Xiao Yan gently exhaled. He leaped forward and appeared at the front of the group. He issued orders in a deep voice. Once those ferocious beasts' attention shifted away from those people behind, the pressure they would face would abruptly soar. Hence, they needed to begin to increase their advancement speed. Understood. Gu Qing Yang also understood their current situation. He nodded and moved, appearing beside Xiao Yin as he did. The remaining people formed a triangular shape. The weakest were placed in the middle. The remaining people would take turns to fight. This tactic would enable them to sustain their advancement for a prolonged period of time. The beast tide has arrived. Charge. Xiao Yin's eyes swept around. All he saw was scarlet eyes, and all he heard was a heavy panting. A cold cry appeared as his speed suddenly increased. A hot heavenly flame surged out of his body and turned into a thousand-foot-large fire dragon that gave off a dragon roar. The fire dragon's large tail was violently swung while its body forcefully killed hundreds of ferocious beasts with earth-shaking steps. See Flipping Seal? Gu Qing Yang unleashed hundreds of handprints when Xiao Yin attacked. His handprints whistled out and cleared the surrounding beasts. At the same time, Sin Air, Kai Lin, Yun Yun, the little fairy doctor, and the rest behind attacked. Vast and mighty Dou Qi spread apart as the ferocious beasts within a hundred meter radius were completely eliminated. 
Their speed was not reduced while they attacked. Within the blink of an eye, they had charged a thousand feet forward. Their strength could be considered quite powerful. If they joined hands, they would be able to successfully charge across the plains if they did not meet any overly powerful ferocious beasts. But unleashing this heavenly flame form was extremely exhausting. However, this exhaustion did not pose much of a problem to Xiao Yin, who possessed many Dou Qi recovery medicinal pills. Those fellows are really quick. Xiao Yin looked at Han Yu while he maintained his speed. Han Yu's group had finally unleashed their true strength at this moment. Not a single ferocious beast could charge into a thousand foot radius of them. Frightening Dou Qi saturated the air around them like a chaotic wave, wildly killing any ferocious beast that charged at them. How much longer? Xiao Yin controlled the fire dragon above his head. It whistled out and cleared away the ferocious beasts in front of his group. His mouth let out an inquiry in a deep voice at the same time. Although they could endure on, this continuous exhaustion was clearly not a solution. We have already reached the deepest parts of the beast tide. Based on this speed, we will be able to successfully break through in half an hour. Of course, the precondition is that we do not meet any troublesome beasts. Even we have never charged this far before until. All we can do is to rely on the information obtained from the clan and make a guess. Sun Air quickly replied. Half an hour. Xiao Yan knit his brow when he heard how much longer it would take. The difficulty of charging through this beast tide was indeed extraordinary. If those people from earlier had not gone all out to charge forward, Xiao Yan's group would have found it even more difficult to charge through this beast tide. Increase our speed. Do not allow the beast tide to completely stop us. Xiao Yan softly cried out. The strength of his attack suddenly soared. At the same time, their speed suddenly increased. The people behind formed a tacit understanding as Xiao Yan's increased speed. They quickly followed and continued to clear the surroundings of the beast tide. This group of theirs was smaller than even an ant in this endless beast tide. Nevertheless, the strength that erupted from them was extremely powerful despite their small numbers, and the people here truly cooperated with each other. None of them were full of doubt like the people from earlier. Their advancement speed was not the least bit slower than the large contingent from earlier. A couple of groups were like small boats flowing against the current of an enormous beast tide. They swayed about and could overturn at any moment, but they ultimately remained afloat and charged through the growing strength of the beast tide with a constant speed, quickly reaching the end. Bang! Cheyenne's palm blasted apart the head of a ferocious beast that had charged to within 50 feet from the group. After which, he once again acted with lightning-like speed as he forced back the ferocious beast on Gu Qing Yang's left. Sun Air intervened and quickly killed it. Thanks. Gu Qing Yin forced back a couple of ferocious beasts with a strike of his palm. He quickly uttered words of thanks without turning his head. Some perspiration had formed on his forehead. Such a prolonged period of exhaustion was an extreme burden to him, and as he progressed deeper, the strength of the surrounding ferocious beasts had increased. By now, even if Xiao Yin, Gu Qing Yang, and the rest attacked, they would need to attack a couple of times before they would be able to kill a ferocious beast. Their advancement speed had significantly slowed. If this continues, we will not be able to endure on even with the support of medicinal pills. Xiaoyan exhaled as he made a statement. Han Yu's group has disappeared. Sun Air's pretty eyes swept over the area in front of them as she suddenly said. They have already charged out. Gu Qing Yang was surprised as he exclaimed. Oh? Surprise flashed within Xiao Yan's eyes when he heard this news. A joy quickly appeared on his face. We're reaching the end of the beast tide. Quick, increase our speed. Xiao Yan waved his hand. His mind was braced as his sluggish attacks became ferocious once again. A couple of handprints of flames were shot out, shaking a couple of huge nine star dozoon beasts until they were forced to pull back. His body took the opportunity to rush forward. Sun Air and the rest quickly followed behind him. Cheyenne's group suddenly became faster upon learning that they were about to break free from the beast tide. The dochi within their bodies completely erupted and forced aside the ferocious beasts that were pouncing over. Bang! Dochi erupted from Xiaoyan's body and formed a fire dragon that ruthlessly smashed into a thousand-foot-large ferocious beast body in front of him. That powerful force blasted its body until a bloody fog formed. The large beast's body collapsed on the ground because of the great pain. Cheyenne's group took this opportunity to fly through the air beyond it. Cheyenne's body landed on the ground after flying out. Dochi began to circulate within his body as a reflexive action, 
but he was stunned to find that no ferocious beasts had pounced over. Only then did he lift his head and sweep his eyes around. He discovered that his surroundings was completely empty. After turning his head, he saw a countless number of ferocious beasts were wildly roaring at them with scarlet eyes a hundred feet away, but they did not dare to charge over for some unknown reason. Have we charged out? Cheyenne's group was startled when they saw the roaring beast that did not dare approach. They heaved a sigh of relief within their hearts. Cheyenne turned after sighing in relief. He looked ahead to see an enormous lush green ancient tree standing alone within the spacious plain 10,000 feet away. A clearer spread from above the ancient tree. It would occasionally transform into various shapes, appearing mysterious and unfathomable. Is this the legendary Bodhisattva ancient tree? Cheyenne's heart began to pound as he looked at the ancient tree standing in the distance. An extremely old aura surrounded it. Bodhisattva ancient tree? Sun Air and the rest discovered the ancient tree in the distance while Xiao Yin was feeling stunned. Many exclamations were emitted from their mouths with some shock. This thing, which only existed in legends, was something that even they, from the ancient clans, had only been able to see in some ancient books. What a large tree! The little fairy doctor muttered. Even though they were extremely far from the Bodhisattva ancient tree, they were still able to sense just how enormous it was. Tree shadows spread and covered the ground giving it the appearance of an ancient monster that stood between the sky and the earth. An extremely old and experienced feeling radiated from it. The members of the Hun clan are likely already there. We should hurry up. Xiaoyan suppressed the fiery heat within his heart. He waved his hand and took the lead to rush toward the ancient tree in the distance. Sun Air and the rest behind him could not be bothered with resting as they quickly followed. Some commotion was once again transmitted from the beast tied behind after Xiao Yan's group moved. A couple of groups charged out in a miserable manner before they landed in this empty area. That is the Bodhisattva ancient tree? These people were still staggering on the ground when they saw the ancient tree that stood between the sky and the earth. A red color suddenly surged into their eyes. This color was reinforced when they saw Xiao Yan's group hurrying over. They were unable to remain still. Even the usually calm Geofong frowned. He could not be bothered with resting as he commanded in a deep voice, follow them. Understood. The experts from the Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe clenched their teeth and nodded when they heard his order. Their bodies rushed forward and they hurriedly chased after Xiao Yan's group. These people. Xiao Yan coldly laughed in his heart when he heard the sound of rushing wind transmitted from behind. He did not reduce his speed as he lifted his head and looked at the Bodhisattva ancient tree which was growing larger in his eyes. A faint fear and respect rose from within his heart. No one would be able to remain calm in front of this divine being that had existed for an unknown amount of time. Cheyenne's group was extremely quick. The tens of thousands of feet of distance was covered within a short few minutes. When Cheyenne's group was about a thousand feet away from the Bodhisattva ancient tree, a group of people suddenly appeared in their line of sight. Hanyu? Cheyenne's group was startled when they saw this group. These people had remained here and waited for the others? Be careful. Cheyenne softly warned. His speed gradually slowed. After which, he slowly landed a short distance behind Han Yu. His eyes swept over the group. Subsequently, he lifted his eyes and looked at the Bodhisattva ancient tree a short distance away. Being this close to the Bodhisattva ancient tree was undoubtedly shocking. It looked like a towering pillar that supported the sky. Its trunk radiated an ancient aura. The branches of the Bodhisattva ancient tree were huge and could cover half of a city. Wave after wave of rich fresh air spread from the ancient tree. This caused the sky to occasionally form many mysterious phenomena. Sunlight was currently scattering down from the sky. It landed on the ancient tree and gave it a somewhat crystal clear appearance. A powerful life force that shocked Cheyenne's group spread over. A. B. Cheyenne's eyes stared intensely at the indescribable Bodhisattva ancient tree. The clear air caused one to feel carefree and untroubled, but he vaguely felt an uneasiness for no reason. This uneasiness originated from Xiao Yan's powerful soul. He wasn't able to detect any immediate danger since the uneasiness that he sensed was extremely obscure. One would not be able to sense it if one did not carefully feel for it. A natural treasure like the Bodhisattva ancient tree can be ranked top three across the Dochi continent. It would be impossible if it did not radiate any danger. Additionally, if this ancient tree has really survived for a countless number of years, 
It should have already formed its own consciousness. Xiao Yin revealed an expression of contemplation. If this Bodhisattva formed a conscious and trained, it would undoubtedly be one of the most terrifying creatures within the Dochi continent. The people here would likely be no match for it. Swoosh. The sound of rushing wind followed close behind while Xiao Yin's group was pondering some thoughts. The Heaven Demon Phoenix tribe and the other few groups hurried over. Finally, they looked at Xiao Yan's and Han Yu's group before slowly landing. Hey, it was extremely difficult to come here. Why has everyone stopped? Jiu Feng slowly walked forward and faintly laughed. Xiao Yan glanced at Jiu Feng but did not speak. On the other hand, Han Yu, who was in front of them, turned around. His original frown was relaxed as he laughed. Aha, everyone is finally here. Since everyone's aim is the Bodhisattva ancient tree, I naturally waited for everyone. Everyone present smiled when they heard his words. Those who were able to arrive were extraordinary people. They had already seen through Hanyu. This person might appear friendly on the surface, but his very bones were filled with a ruthlessness. Those who believed his words had remained in the beast tide. They had been turned into shattered meat before being devoured into the ferocious beast's stomachs. Hanyu was indifferent when he saw everyone's superficial smiles. A smile still appeared on his face. He pointed to the Bodhisattva ancient tree behind him and said, This is our aim. Although we have broken through the beast tide, the most difficult thing to deal with is still the Bodhisattva ancient tree. Oh? Everyone's heart shook when they heard his words. Their eyes paused on Han Yu's face. There is a record on a scroll within our Han clan that an ancestor had once come to the Bodhisattva ancient tree. However, contact with him was eventually lost. By the time the experts from my clan had received news, both he and the Bodhisattva ancient tree had completely disappeared. Hanyu laughed. Although I do not know what happened to that ancestor, he most likely died. It is likely that he fell to the hands of the Bodhisattva ancient tree. Additionally, the strength of this ancestor was a Bansheng. Bansheng? The expressions of Xiao Yan's group changed. Even a Bansheng expert had gone missing because of this Bodhisattva ancient tree? Therefore, Everyone should not underestimate this Bodhisattva ancient tree. The most dangerous thing during this trip will be that. Hanyu slowly explained. The reason that you are waiting here is because you do not wish to head there alone, right? Gu Qingyang glanced at Hanyun and remarked. Hanyu smiled but did not deny Gu Qingyang's words. He rotated his body and slowly walked toward the enormous Bodhisattva ancient tree. Since everyone had arrived, they would all get to see the mysteries of this Bodhisattva ancient tree. Hanyu was not afraid that the others would not follow because he understood the allure of the Bodhisattva ancient tree. Be careful. Xiaoyan's eyes swept over Hanyu's back and the distant Bodhisattva ancient tree. He softly uttered those words before lifting his leg to follow. Regardless of whether Hanyu was speaking the truth, it was impossible for them to give up so easily after spending so much to reach this place. Everyone nodded. After which, they followed Xiaoyan. Dochi quietly began to circulate around his body. Jiu Feng and the other few groups behind Xiao Yin hesitated for a moment before choosing to follow. Their thoughts were the same as Xiao Yan's. They had spent so much effort to arrive. Gaps formed between the various groups as they traveled across the spacious grassy plains. They adopted a similar pace as they slowly headed toward the towering tree. Young Master Xiao Yin, something is not quite right with the Bodhisattva ancient tree. That clear air which seems to be filled with life, hides a somewhat dark and chilly miasma. It's filled with many negative emotions similar to those of humans. Ching Lin suddenly spoke with a grave face as the group walked closer to the Bodhisattva ancient tree. Xiaoyan's footsteps momentarily paused when he heard her words. His eyes narrowed. He was naturally unable to sense such a thing, but Ching Lin possessed the triple jade green snake flower pupils. Hence, Xiaoyan did not doubt her words and he was able to vaguely sense the uneasy feeling from earlier become more prominent as he approached the Bodhisattva ancient tree. While the caution within Xiao Yan's heart soared, Han Yu's group at the front suddenly halted. They stood quite close to the Bodhisattva ancient tree. The towering, vast, lush, and green tree covered the sky above them. Only after getting this close, did Xiao Yan's group gradually feel an extremely obscure chill slowly seep into their bones. Xiao Yan lifted his head, his eyes focused on the enormous Bodhisattva ancient tree. Its tree branches were a thousand feet in size with a bright cluster near the center. This light cluster looked like a ten-foot-large energy heart. 
A powerful heartbeat was vaguely emitted from the light cluster. Bodice of a heart. Many eyes gathered on the light cluster that was hidden by the body of the enormous tree. Their hearts violently pounded at this moment. Crash. After the words, Bodhisattva heart, were emitted from the mouths of some people, the Bodhisattva ancient tree, which had been standing quietly within this grassland, suddenly emitted a crashing sound. Everyone watched as the tree branches twined together before being lowered. These tree branches slowly split apart upon making contact with the ground, and five expressionless figures slowly stepped away from them. The very space around them began to fluctuate after these five figures stepped forward. A frightening pressure suddenly spread from them. Elite Ban Shanks. The faces of everyone present became ugly when they sensed this pressure because they had discovered that these five figures were actually all Elite Ban Shanks.